Okay, so we just finished the lecture on cardiac conduction and understanding the EKG. Now we're going to build on that, like one of those build a blocks from our childhood. Boom. Like Dr. Seuss said, the more you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places that you will go. Well, you're going places because you're a star. So let's pick up where we left off with the phases of the cardiac cycle. And we're going to break this down to digestible and understandable pieces of information. It's like A, B, C, just like one, two, three. The cardiac cycle process begins with the SA node triggers, prompting the atria to undergo depolarization, depicted by the EKG P wave. The subsequent contraction of the atria elevates their internal pressure, propelling blood into the ventricles. It's worth noting that atrial contraction enhances ventricular filling only modestly since the ventricles have mostly filled passively through the open AV valves due to gravity. As the contraction of the atria concludes, the pressure within them diminishes, changing the pressure differential across the AV valves and leading to their closure. This event generates the first heart sound, known as S1, signaling the commencement of systole. Concurrently, the QRS complex on the EKG indicates the ventricles are midway through depolarization, beginning their contraction and swiftly increasing internal pressure, as we can see here. Despite the contraction, the ventricles are in a sealed state as the semilunar valves have not yet opened, a period termed isovolumetric contraction since there's no blood ejection and the ventricular volume remains constant, hence the term isovolumetric. The ventricles then proceed to the phase of rapid ejection as their internal pressure surpasses those in the aorta and pulmonary artery, prompting the aortic and pulmonary valves to open, allowing blood to be propelled out. That's because the pressure in the ventricles has exceeded the internal pressures in the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So because it's exceeded that, the valves have opened. With the onset of ventricular repolarization, as indicated by the T wave, the pressure within the ventricles starts to decline, diminishing the force with which blood is ejected. Once the ventricular pressures fall below those in the aorta and pulmonary artery, the semilunar valves shut, delineating the end of systole and the start of diastole an event marked by the second heart sound, S2. That's the closure of aortic and pulmonary valves, S2. The early phase of diastole sees the ventricles relaxing while all valves are sealed, leading to a swift decrease in ventricular pressure without any change in volume. Simultaneously, the atria fill with blood, causing a gradual rise in atrial pressure. The cycle moves towards completion as the ventricular pressures dip below the atrial pressures, resulting in the AV valves opening and blood descending into the ventricles by gravity and initiating the passive filling phase. So that pretty much walked us through step by step 
the cardiac cycle. But 